seven in Scotland, a well welterweight title contender Gary Jacobs and Jim Neely. <laughs> A packed house here at the Magnum Leisure Centre in Irvine in Scotland to watch one of the uh, great little Scots of the modern era, Paul Weir, the former WBO strawweight or mini flyweight champion, that at seven stone seven. Now challenging once again for the light flyweight championship, that's a seven stone ten, so they don't come much smaller than this. So it's Paul Weir from Irvine in Scotland and from El Dorado Park just outside Johannesburg in South Africa. Number three contender, Paul Oden, the 22 year old. We're in uh, blue in Scotland with the white St Andrew's cross and in the old white is Paul Olden from South Africa. We're in just his ninth professional fight and this is his uh, fourth world title fight so it's really quite hard to believe but these days in modern boxing just about anything can happen. Paul Weir cut very badly on the occasion of his last fight way back in February when he lost to uh, Ozui Camacho for this very title which then was vacant. Camacho went on to lose to Michael Carbajal, who was given the title up. And was subsequently lost for another version against Humberto Gonzalez, the Mexican. So the title vacant, and one of these little men will uh, emerge from this contest over 12 three-minute rounds as the WBO light flyweight champion of the world. Good solid start by Paul Weir, who uh, hard to describe two men of this size towering over everybody, but he's a couple of inches uh, of height over Paul Oden and a little bit in terms of reach. With me a man who has his sights set very much in a world title sometime next year, the welterweight title, the WBC version held by Cornell Whitaker, is uh, another Scott, Gary Jacobs. And this is always going to be a hard fight for Paul Weir, Gary. It's always going to be tough. He's looking to come back from a, from a loss earlier in this year. And it's very unusual. I mean, as you say, he's only his ninth fight to, to fight for our four world title fights, but there's not a lot of people like this way. And uh, he, it's very unusual as well for Paul to be fighting a guy that's smaller than him. He's coming off a loss, he's looking to come out and, and win the title. And this year, other than Olden is coming over, he's coming into Paul's backyard to try and win the title. They've both only lost one fight, so as the makings of a very good fight, Olden's been doing a lot of screaming and shouting how he's going to knock Paul out. But he's got the makings of a very, very good fight. Some nice countering day by Weir. Older, not um, quite the smallest boxer in South Africa, the smallest professional in the world is baby Jake Matlala, who actually fights at a weight higher than this. So it's Olden in white from South Africa, just 22, the uh, current South African strawweight champion. And that's at seven stone seven, so he's moved up by three very precious pounds, and they've both come just inside the limit. Indeed, Weir was right on seven stones ten, and Olden just announced underneath. Good solid finish to the round by Paul Weir and the referee stepping in straight away and Weir apologises for hitting after the bell. Yeah, I think that was just unlucky. It was just a, a case of he was throwing the punch and the bell went and landed after the bell or on the bell. There was no malice. That was, it wasn't deliberate. It's just one of these things that happen. There's Paul Weir now, 27 years old. This is ninth professional contest. He's won seven and lost one. He's had three wins inside the distance. The only defeat, that to Hazui Camacho, away back in Glasgow in February for the WBO light flyweight title. Paul Olden from El Dorado Park near Johannesburg, 22, five years younger. 13 professional contests, and like Paul Weir, he's lost one. He's won 12 of his, however, eight of them inside the distance. The second of the scheduled 12 rounder, the WBO light flyweight championship of the world at stake, the vacant title. Well, we're in the uh, St Andrews Cross in Scotland. And Paul Olden, so a pair of Pauls, I'm not sure which one of them will be canonized uh, when the hand is raised at the end of this fight, but all Scotland very much behind Paul Weir. Good amateur career he had and a pretty successful professional career until he met Josui Camacho from Puerto Rico. One of the judges here tonight from Puerto Rico, the other is from the United States and from Germany, as indeed is the referee, Michael Fisher. Olden's been a professional since February of 1991. 
on his first and second, lost in his third fight when, uh, in fact, he was stopped. But since then, it's been wins all the way against two of those wins against pretty decent Mexican-American opponents. Well, yeah, the guy looks very capable. He's, he's going back and he's, he's setting himself well. He's throwing his punches. But Paul's also, he's the man in charge. He's the man creating the pace at the moment. He's going forward, landing some crisp jabs and good right hands. Oden's uh, standing his ground as well, and he's throwing back punches. It's, uh, it will be a tough battle. I think they're both fairly capable punchers, and especially at this weight, it's, uh, they can throw fine wee characters. Oden, uh, about a year ago, was rated as one of the best uh, prospects in the African company. That left hand shows just right, and the wear is throwing shots. Uh, there's a, a certain ominous accuracy about the uh, punching of Paul Oden. And what the weird corner are desperately worried about is uh, the chance of cuts around the eyes. After the Belcastro fight in February, Paul Weir needed no fewer than 22 stitches. Needless to say, everything Weir does is uh, roundly applauded by the crowd here in the uh, Magnum Centre. That's been a good nine months anyway for uh, Weir's cuts to hold. I don't think they'll be worrying about the cuts at the moment. Just in case a clash of heads, he's landed there with a great right hand. Well, Weir just doubled everything up. He went from head to body with the left and then came across with the right. But Olden has taken it well. He was stopped, however. He's been uh, stopped once, so his record would indicate that he may just be vulnerable. Weir has won only three of his uh, seven victories inside the distance. But this is Weir's fourth world title fight. So although he's had uh, fewer fights than the South African, he's more experienced at a higher level. There's some good clinical boxing going on here by both boys. Weir is throwing great jabs, good right hands, and Olden's coming back with the same. I think Weir's shots are having a wee bit more power and a wee bit more effect on Olden. Well, what a good second round in front of the packed house here in Irvine. Well, there's Paul Weir, and uh, no sign of any uh, damage at all. They were desperately worried about uh, his eyes, which were badly cut at the end of the Belcastro fight. As Gary Jacobs said, he's had 10 months in which to prepare, and he's had a lot of hard sparring, and he looks pretty fresh. A slight bit of bruising underneath the left eye, but they don't worry too much about cuts underneath the eye, Gary. Yeah, I think it was I think it was Camacho he was fighting there. Belcastro's a wee bit too big for him. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think it's really a problem. He's just going to get home. He has to go home with a job, and he doesn't... There you go. There you go, left hand, right hook, left hand to the body, some good combinations. So Paul Weir from Scotland, who's uh, held a world title, the WBO strawweight title, that's seven and a half stones. And he's failed once to win this, the light flyweight title, which is seven stone tens. There must be a little bit of concern about him because there was a, a tiny little nick just above the eyebrow of his left eye and Paul Olden, I'm quite sure, will have realised that towards the end of the round. And Weir has got to stay out of trouble. At the moment, he's working quite well behind uh, a decent left jab and occasionally coming across with his right hand. And he mustn't get drawn into uh, a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle with this man. He's got to keep the head moving. Yeah, he seems to be standing upright and he's got his, he's got his guard high, held high at the moment. So he's, 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 he's keeping himself protected at all times. He's winning the jab. I don't think the cut's really going to bother him. He was cutting his last fight and he had a fairly... I think he had three or four cuts and he managed to get through the 12 rounds, no problem. So I think that will hold no fear for him. Paul Olden this time, uh, spoken to about a low blow by the German referee, Mr. Michael Fisher. And we're moving very nicely indeed and he's taking a lot of those Olden shots on his arms. Olden very highly rated, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters. It's reckoned in the continent of Africa. And we're turning his man well. And again, that weird defence looking pretty good. Yeah, Paul seems to be taking everything in the elbows, the forearms. The, uh, Olden's not really getting through with anything clean. Only danger about that one, supposes, Gary, is that uh, if you take too many after a certain length of time, your arms do get sore and you might just drop them. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully it won't, it won't drop them. They do get sore, but that's the name of the game. That's to protect you, protecting your rib cage, protecting the floating rib, and also keeping your, your hands up at your chin. Well, a lesson there from Gary Jacobs, not just in boxing, but in uh, anatomy as well, I suspect. 
Holden putting on the pressure now. We're moving away. It's the final minute. A nice short, crisp little left jab from, from Olden. Weir comes back. That's good. Boxing from the stop. Well, this is uh, scheduled for 12 rounds. Olden said at the press conference that he was going to stop Weir in either four or possibly he might let it go to five. And Paul Weir was not a bit pleased with that at all. Well, it's been a fiery start. Olden hasn't stopped throwing punches. He's been throwing punches right from the start of this round. His arms have been pumping out. Weir has to keep on fighting back and doing the way he's doing. He's still, he's still landing the cleaner punches. Well, Weir came in with three, four very good punches and then moved away. And despite the fact there's a lot of swelling underneath the uh, left eye in particular of Weir, there's no sign of that little cut which appeared at the end of the last round over his left eyebrow reappearing. So Dunkey Jard in the corner has done a fine job. And what a great round of boxing that was. And Paul Weir is more than pleased with his performance. Well, a packed hall here and uh, to a man behind Paul Weir. Paul Olden hasn't brought much in the way of support. Needless to say, all the way from Johannesburg. Yeah, this is a good exchange of punches. We have got the better of that exchange uh, Landed with a crisp right hand. Here we go, you'll see, there you go. Chucks his head back. Good jab, good right hand. There won't be very much between these two. The man in white, Paul Olden from South Africa. Rated uh, number three by the WBO in the light flyweight division. And Paul Weir from Irvine in Scotland, rated the number one contender for the vacant title which is being contested tonight. 16, 1700 people packed into the Magnum Centre in Irvine. This is some very good boxing skills from Paul Weir as well. He's got some great ring craft moving around, moving around away from, from Olden's right hand, making a miss and coming back with like two or three punches of his own now. Well, that's got to be uh, Weir's tactics. He's got to get in and out again and keep away from those right hands, especially those slicing ones, because well, Paul Weir, 22 stitches following the fight with Josue Camacho, will be conscious of uh, the vulnerability of his eyes. A harder punching coming from Weir. And yet, still old and keeps going forward, keeps pumping out the arms. He's the man forcing the pace now. Well, we saw a Scot lose to a South African within the last year here in, uh, in Scotland. Pat Clinton lost his uh, flyweight title to the uh, incredible baby Jake Matlala. Flyweight, the uh, division just higher than this, and baby Jake Matlala smaller than either of these two. That's hard to believe. We're moving nicely from the waist. Yeah, some very good boxing skills. Olden still going forward, strong, very fit, keeps pumping out the arms. Stronger punches coming from here, but it still hasn't. Olden hasn't hasn't shook him at all. He just keeps coming forward. Weir's going to have to once again put the him heads in. clash rather ominously. We're just standing still, letting his man come on to him. Lovely variation from Weir, that's better boxing. Olden still comes forward, but there's a, a hint of a look of an anxiety about his face. Yeah, Paul Weir needs to do more of that, two, three punch combinations. And keep them coming. Well, this is better from Weir, good right hand. Well, Olden is coming forward, but uh, he's leaning on for the first time. And maybe the confidence of the South African has been sapped by Paul Weir. Weir, spoken to by the German referee Michael Fisher for use of the head. But this has been Weir's best run, his best spell but he can't afford to let things go. It was good boxing by Paul Weir, and for the first time, Olden looked as if he might be in trouble. There's that big right again, and Olden comes bouncing straight back. Has Olden stopped punching for maybe a spell of 30 seconds there? Paul Oden 
really took a shot or two towards the end of that uh, sixth round, the round to take us to the halfway stage. And as corner, I think we'll have to say to him, you've got to step up the work rate. He's breathing fairly heavily, and uh, no wonder because of Paul Weir's attack, and it was a great spell by Paul Weir. That's it. Paul, Paul Oden stopped punching there for a spell of about 30 seconds, and it gave Weir the chance, and Weir took full advantage of it. Combination, good left, right, straight back in, two, three punch com combinations, and he took full advantage, and he, he needs to do more of that to, to start dominating Almost and controlling the fight. Second out. Seven. Into the second half of this contest for the WBO Light Flyweight Championship of the World. And the last couple of rounds, Paul Weir from Scotland, the former WBO uh, strawweight champion. That's at seven stone seven, just three pounds below this weight at 7.10. Starting to edge, albeit very slightly, ahead. And signs at the end of that round that uh, the hard punching of Weir might just be getting through to the man from uh, South Africa, Paul Holden. Holden has got a, a nine-month-old son who's called Ray Evander, so one assumes it's after uh, Ray Leonard and uh, Evander Holyfield. Uh, weren't two bad boxers at all. I said both of them are not two bad fighters. I don't know if he was half as good as any of them. Well, he's about half the size of the two of them, especially Holyfield. In fact, he's, he's less than half the size of Holyfield. I was going to say that myself. Seven stone, nine pounds, and 14 ounces, Paul Olden. Paul Weir coming in right on seven stone, ten, the limit. And that's uh, terrific conditioning and terrific preparation. We're really digging in. It's Weir's harder punches have been the more conclusive in this contest so far. Yeah, I think the body shots from Weir are going to end up sapping the strength from Oldham. They are, they are, they are great shots and there are very few and far between in, in, in the pro games. And these are the ones that are real kind of goals. Oh, Oldham once again under pressure and there's a fair bit to go. And this is the seventh round. And Weir looking for the finish but mustn't get careless. But Oldham really is very resilient. Weir put him right back for the second time in the contest. And... Olden displaying tremendous guts and tremendous heart and tremendous boxing skills and what a chin. Oh yeah, that's him digging real deep there. That's the first time that Weir's really got on top. That really shook him right to the bottom of his boots. He was banging trouble there and he dug deep and he came back and fought back well. And a good right hand from Olden just to remind the Scott Paul Weir that he's very much in this contest. And we will have five more rounds to go. We've another minute of this one, the seventh. Not a single sign of emotion on the face of Paul Olden. He grimaced and winced a little bit as Weir landed. A lovely quick hand speed from Weir. And again, Olden showing signs of weariness and having to hang on. And he's holding. The head of Weir uh, bruising into the face of Olden. 30 seconds to go to the end of this round. This has been a cracking contest between two great little men. That's, I think the key in this round has been the body shot, the left hook to the body for Weir. That's really slowed him down. Well, he may well have heard and... Uh, it was just on the uh, on the hip bone, and the mouth of Olden is now open. He's taken a lot of very hard shots, as Gary Jacobs was saying, especially to the body. And we're another good run for him in the last three runs, runs seven, six, and five, that appear to have gone the way of the Scotsman Paul Weir. Well, that little nick that appeared uh, above the left eyebrow of Paul Weir is completely closed over. He's uh, getting some of that precious oxygen into the lungs, but he looks unruffled, and it was a great round once again for Paul Weir. And I say he looks in complete control. There you go, the left hook to the body, double left hook, and trying to get through with the right. That's what's really sapping the strength of Olden, and it's always later on in the fight that he'll start slowing down. Olden has actually slowed down a bit, but the body shots are a real good key. There you go. Good right hand. Gives him a chance. It slows Olden down. The body shots takes everything out of him. Second out, round 11. Paul Weir's corner, the blue corner for the man in the blue trunks from Scotland. A little bit slow and getting the stool away. Just remember, the WBO Light Flyweight Championship of the World. Two more rounds to go. Paul Weir from Scotland, rated uh, number one contender. The number three, Paul Olden from South Africa.
between them. Just uh, 23 professional fights, including this one. Uh, Weir gets a couple in and has to take one back. That's a measure of the strength of Paul Olden's chin. Good pressure by Olden. We're for the first time looking slightly worried. Yeah, both these guys are standing toe to toe now. Punch for punch. And the olden corner, Gary, may well have said to him, uh, we reckon you might just be behind, so you've got two rounds in which to win this contest. Well, two good rounds might just nick it for him, well, or he may I have mean, to go for the stoppage. It's very, very close. I mean, I wouldn't like to put on who's, who's, uh, who's going to win this fight. olden has been forcing the pace, but having no success. He's got to try and slow Weir down. He's been landing a lot of good right hands on Weir, but Weir's also been taking them very well. Well, I may be mistaken, but I think there's a little cut somewhere in Paul Weir's forehead. And there's been one or two nasty little uh, bumps together of heads. Midway through this round, and I think it's um, almost right in the middle, just above the nose. And Olden is coming forward, and you can see him focusing his attention on the centre of Paul Weir's face. And this is a better round by the South African. And Weir's got to get himself off the ropes and out of trouble. And all of a sudden, the steam is starting to go out of Paul Weir. And that's the second time the referee has spoken to him, and Weir's got to... Uh, get back to that jab and move tactic I say he's got to try and he's got to weather the storm here he's under, he's under a lot of pressure Odin's thrown a lot of punches and landing with a lot that was a good right hand by Weir and uh, Odin slapped and Weir's doing all the moving and uh, Odin may be impressing the three judges from Germany the United States and Puerto Rico by coming forward all the time but it's the first time we've seen Paul Weir look a little bit worried I say it's the first time he's really been stopped in his tracks and under a wee bit of pressure. But he's fighting back. Well, we are going to get, with 30 seconds of this round to go, we're going to get three absolutely cracking minutes of boxing at seven stones and ten pounds. I think it's been 33 minutes of cracking boxing already. It's been a fantastic fight. We're showing signs, perhaps, in this the penultimate round of uh, tiring ever so slightly but finishes off with that left-right combination and covers up nicely and that will not do him any harm or do his confidence any harm and Olden looks at him as if to say I don't know what you're doing still in my face well he looked very very strong in that round and uh, he has come in in a condition that's equal to anything that we've seen from Paul Weir very tired he looks he'd really be going on automatic now Oh yeah, I mean, both boys will be very, very tight, including Olden. Olden's been pumping out, he's been pumping both arms out. Weir's been landing the better punches, the harder punches, but maybe not doing enough. Who knows, I still wouldn't like to put, put back a winner here. It's very, very close, it's right down to the last round. Great stuff there from Olden, Weir on the ropes, and for the first time perhaps in the whole contest, he had to stand his ground, and then he had to step forward and hold on, and we haven't seen him do that in... Uh, Almost 11 rounds of boxing. Almost 10 seconds. Second out. 12, last round. There's not going to be very much between them on the scorecards of the three judges. Puerto Rico, the United States and Germany. The official from Germany, Michael Fisher, not scoring. And Paul Weir starting to show a little bit of uh, weariness towards the end of that run. He's got to dig deep into his reserves. He's trained for some 10 months for this, having failed to take the title away from Hazui Camacho when it was vacant away back in February. It's vacant again, and either Paul Weir or Paul Olden will become the WBO light flyweight champion of the world. Tiny little man, under eight stone, seven stone, 10. And they have fought like men two or three times their size and pound for pound my goodness they've been throwing some hard punches yeah, this has been a cracking fight a cracking pace the whole way through it's all down to this last round i think whoever's going to win this last round might win the fight it's been a, it's been a great fight and whoever wins the last round is, is a, whatever boy wins this fight is deserved of being a world champion well where is uh back to the tactic that served him pretty well especially in the middle of the fight that's coming out with that left and then across with the right and keeping out of trouble Nasty clash of heads as Olden jumps inside the guard of the Scot. One minute gone, two minutes to go to decide who's going to be the WBO light flyweight champion of the world. 
Oden has been going forward straight from the word go. He's still the man that's is pressing forward. We are landing the crisper punches, but he's still been pumping out. It's a very, very tough, very close fight. I wouldn't like to predict who's what the outcome of this is going to be. Oden throwing that overhead right and Paul Weir popping out the left. Into the second half of this, the 12th and final round. Tremendous support here in the Magnum Centre in Irvine behind the local boy Paul Weir. And what a night it will be in this small town if their local hero can become a world champion. Well, I think it's good. This is the first time a world title fight has ever come to Irvine. And it'd be great for the, for the, for the country and great for the... For, for Irvine to, to even host if he, if he did win to come and defend the world title here. Well, a good right hand from where it was greeted with an immense roar of approval. It's going to go down to the three judges. And we don't reckon there's going to be a desperate lot between them. We're just moving away, not wanting to get involved. He's just popping out that left hand and trying to stay out of trouble. And Oldham coming forward. Great footwork by Ware. And Oldham stops as if to say, I really can't do very much more, but he may just have something there. And that has given Weir great confidence. A little look of resignation came over the face of uh, Paul Olden. Yeah, I think when, uh, when uh, Weir made a miss there, he should have been straight in on top. Don't give him any advantage. The referee hasn't parted him. He's made a miss. He should have been capitalising on that and right in on top of him. There's the final bell. Paul Weir reckons he's won it. He goes over to the South African corner, waves to the hometown fans. Paul Oldham goes back, puts his head down. What a great fight. We're very, very confident. And everybody here in Urban thinks certainly the three judges may go in his favour. He gave up his uh, strawweight title fight. He lost in his first attempt to win this light flyweight title. And Paul Weir may just be a decision away from being champion of the world at 7 stone 10. They certainly think so. And ladies and gentlemen, the result of the Daily Mirror WBO Junior Flyweight Championship of the World, we have a unanimous decision. <laughs> Judge Arthur Ellenson from Germany scores the contest 119 to 110. Judge Nelson Vasquez from Puerto Rico scores the contest 117 to 111. Judge Frank Cairo from the United States scores the contest 116 to 112. A unanimous decision and the new WBO Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, Paul Weir. Well, great scenes here in Irvine. The German judge gave it to Weir by nine rounds. The judge from Puerto Rico by six. I've got to say, the judge from the United States of America who gave it to Weir by four rounds, well, by my reckoning, was uh, the most accurate of the three, and I think Gary Jacobs will probably go along with that. Yeah, I think Weir just edged out by maybe three or four rounds. He was definitely the closest. Uh, I didn't see nine rounds in it for Weir, but I, I think... The better, the crisper, the cleaner punches from Weir was, uh, was enough to, to win him the fight. So the WBO belt goes around the waist of Paul Weir for the second time. He had the WBO strawweight title, seven stone seven, and now he's become champion of the world at seven stone ten, and probably the happiest wee man in Scotland tonight.